to this point, we've done a lot of theory and we haven't done a lot of exercises. So in this exercise, if you want to pause the video uh, at any point so you can do the exercises, feel free to do so. So in this, in this exercise, we are, we are going to find the statistical numbers. So we're going to find the mean. That's the average. We are going to find the max of a sequence of numbers. We are going to find the sum. And we are going to find the mode. And we are going to find the median. And we are also going to find the range. First off, let's start with something simple and let's find the, 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 the minimum. Find min and max. So we have the mean, the max, and the min, the sum, the mode, the median, and the range. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find the min. In order to find the, the minimum value in a set of numbers, in a sequence of numbers, not a set, a sequence, because a set means they would, uh, they, they would probably be different numbers. So let's just go ahead and do uh, find, find min. So we can do something like this. Uh, for this exercise, we're going to use floats. So we just create our function, find min. And we are going to use an array of numbers. So we can do something like this. We can use either a pointer or we can use a an array array notation. So we can do something like this. So we set our set our set of numbers like this, and we can say float. And let's just say that, for example, they are uh, math grades. So we can call it math grades. And we can initialize them. Now we can initialize them from the command line. I prefer not to do that at this point. If, if we were going to initialize them from the command line, all you have to do is scan it for each number, and I think you can figure that out. So, let's say, for example, we had math grades, and in, in the score of 0 to 100, we will take 75.5, or let's just say 75.0. Let's say 80. doing that, keeping them out of sequence, out of order, is because in order for us to find, later when we have to find the median, they have to be sorted. And we haven't gotten into sorting. And I can do that in another tutorial. But for now, let's just keep them sorted. And we have here five scores. One, two, three, four, five. We have our math grades and now we are going to find the min. So we say we can just say print s And the reason that I did this, and I said 0.1s, and I actually don't have to do that. I could just do that, 0.1s. I think I can get away with that. 0.1s 
0.1 amps is because I only want to go one decimal point uh, down. I don't want to go more than that. So, and we have 5 min. I could have captured the result and then stored it there. For now, we're just going to find min just like this. Call the function and keep in mind we can nest function calls just like this. So we're going to find min. Now, in order for us to find min, you have to loop through the sequence of numbers. And to do that, we also need to know the length. We'll call it sequence length. And we have to pass that also. And so now, in order for us to find the min, we just have to loop through all the numbers and find the minimum value. So to do that, we can use our for loop. So notice I didn't declare i, so let's just declare i here. And we have to also have the min, so it actually is a float. And there's there's a way to do this. In order to find the min, we can act we can set the min to a really high number, higher than one hundred since we know our max, but Better yet, we can just set it to the sequence, to the first element of the sequence. So we can just say sequence. And typically, it, it probably wouldn't make sense to set it to the sequence since it's already sorted. So let's just, in this case, we can set it to something really high like 100. And let's, let's do that. Here we have to just use an if statement so we have to compare the min to the sequence if sequence I whatever than I is less than min then we set our min to that and this will naturally give us the lowest value. It's going to loop through and it's going to say it's the first item in the sequence lower and then it's going to set it and it's going to compare all the values in it. Now, since our array is already sorted, once it finds that one, nothing else is going to be true further down. But we still have to loop through all of them because if it wasn't sorted, we have to still find it. And we, we can do the same thing for find max. Once we get get through with the loop, we return the min. And we can see what our min is. And if we did everything correctly, it will give us 75. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We have an error. Okay. So it tells us that we have an error on line 31. Sequence leg undeclared. So Sequence length is undeclared, and we didn't declare our sequence length. There's a couple of ways we can do this. We can hard code it and just say, okay, we know we have so many. Or we can say, we can do that, size of, and then we can say divided by, for example, we can say and this gives us the length because we have the size of the array divided by the number of bytes so because this is going to give us the length the size of the array in number of bytes and
and this is going to give us the number of bytes in the first element in the array. And when we divide that, it gives us the actual length of the array. So let's do that. And this should give us our sequence. So it tells us that our min is 75. Now, we can do the same thing to find max, because that's another one of the assignments. And we just rename it to say find max. But this time we have a different variable for find max. And we can do this. And since we're finding max, we just set it to zero. This time when it goes through the sequence, it's going to look through and anything greater than the initial value of max is going to set it. So the first one is 75. And so if the sequence, this, this changes a little bit, if the sequence i is greater than max, then set the max equal to the value in the sequence. So the first time around it's going to go 75. And it's going to bubble up all the way to the end, eventually getting to 97. Same thing here. And if we run it, it'll give us our max, which is correct. It is 97. And so the next thing we're going to find, so we have the mean, which is the average. And in order to get the average, one of the first things we have to do is we could write a function that says find average and we can pass the sequence and I could have just copied that and we can find the average that way but uh, we may want to break it apart into finding the sum first and then taking that and finding the average. We can do that. Finding the sum is one of our assignments. So let's go ahead and find the sum first. Because what we can do is we can say that gets the sum. So let's do a function that gets the sum. And let's just copy one of our functions since we're already doing that. And we'll just rename everything. So we can say get sum and we don't need the min. We need uh, the index and so we have the sum and our sum is going to be initialized to 0, 0.0 .0. and we don't need an if statement because we're just adding the numbers together and the sum is going to be sum plus whatever comes next in the sequence so the first time around it'll be uh, it'll be 75, and then the second time it'll be 75 stored in sum, and it'll be 75 plus the next item in the sequence, which is 80, and then those two become the sum, and then the next sequence, and so on and so forth until it gets to the end. So to get sum, we just do something simple like this. So now that we have the sum, we can find the average. And the average is just, we have to get the sum divided by the sequence length. For example, if you have five grades, you add the total sum of those five grades divided by the number 
of grades, which is the sequence length, and it gives us the average. So let's see what our average score is. Before that, let's go ahead and find the sum. about copying and pasting, and I've made this mistake early on, and I still even make that, that mistake, is that when you copy and paste, just make sure that you make all the correct changes and you validate it. And right now, we're not unit testing. We're just displaying the values, but uh, down the road, you can actually unit test. And I'll, I plan to make some videos that show you how to unit test your, uh, your, your code, but we won't get into that right now. In a later video, I will show you some very simple ways that you can use unit testing without even using a, a, a framework. So now let's see if the, our sum works correct. If our sum is correct, it should be 75 and 80, 155, 155 and 80, 235, 240, 240, so 95, 335, 335 and 90, uh, 4. 25, 432. So it should be, I think, 432. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and run it. And we have something. <clears throat> so it gives us the error. 36 and min undeclared. So let's go to 36. And so we are returning the wrong value here. So because this is sum. So let's go ahead and run it again. And now it says, okay, sequence and sequence length error expected on 38. So it's missing something on line 38. So it appears we have an error. And the error actually is that we are not returning our average. So we have to return the average. There we go. Let's try it now. So our error... And this is a mistake I made, and this is coming from other languages. Sometimes you make mistakes, and you don't see them right away. But this is an error on my part, and this is acceptable in languages like Java, but it's not acceptable in C. In C, you actually have to have the um, square brackets after the variable. So let's give it a try. Okay, so that, that fixes our compiler error. So now we have average. So the sum comes out to 432, just as we thought. And so now we have find max. So actually, excuse me, we have get, get uh, find average. So let's go ahead and find the average. And we just go ahead and copy one of these. And one, th one mistake that I made here. I didn't name these correctly. And we'll just abbreviate average. And let's see if we get the right values. And that seems to be correct. So now we have the min, the max. We have the min, the max, and the sum. Min, max, sum, and the average. So we have accomplished mean, max, sum, uh, and min. And so let's go ahead and find the median. So how would you find the median? Well, the median can be determined very simply by doing something like this. So if we want to find the median, we will do something like this. And since we already know, since we already know the sequence length, we can take and find the sequence length. And if it's an odd number, if sequence length is odd, and the way we find out if, if it's odd, well, 
by finding out if it's not even. And for that, we use our modulus operator, in this case, of the remainder value. So, so if it's even, means that we have, for example, six grades. And in order to find a median, we must take the average of the two middle numbers. So in order to do that, we can just simply divide. We can say middle number. say middle equals sequence length divided by 2. Now when we do that, if we have a sequence of 6 numbers, that's going to give us, for example, 6 divided by 2 will give us 3. So remember that we are 0 base. So when we do that, it'll give us the index 3. Index 3 is the actual fourth position because we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. So what we want to do in that case is take the two middle numbers and divide and, and take those two middle numbers, add them, and divide them. So what we would do in that case, we would take those two middle numbers, and so we want the, the item at index uh, 3 and item at index 2. So we can do this. We can say and we can say median equals sequence length, well not sequence length, sequence middle and middle minus 1 plus sequence middle. So we take those two values, add them together, and divide them by 2. Once we do that, we take that and return that as our median. But we don't have, in this case, we have an odd number, so we must also account for that. So if it's not that, then we can say else. And in this case, the middle number, if we take the middle number, for example, in the case of 5, and divide it by 2, it'll give us 2. And since we're doing integer math, we can say, so in this case, we can actually bring this out. Instead of doing it in there, we do it, we execute it one time. Y executed in the if and else. And so our median would be equal to, in this case, it would give us 5 divided by 2 is 4. Of course, it's going to have a remainder. But since we're doing integer math, it's not going to give us a float number. It's going to give us the index. So 5 divided by 2 is going to give us 2, which is what we want, 0, 1, and 2. So the median is equal to sequence middle. Because that is what we want. But let's see if it gives us the correct value. So I made a mistake here. Instead of just calling median, I should have returned median. There's no return statement, but just keep that in mind. And we called it find median. And let's give it a try. And our median is 85, and as you can see, it is correct. Now, let's assume that, let's say, for example, that we had six numbers. Let's see if everything else still works. What if we had two 85s? Will our algorithm still work? That's 286, I'm sorry. And it's 85.5 because our median is this. So in this case, our min, our max are still correct. Our whole algorithm still works. 
Now, if we were to do something like this, where our highest, our max should change. For readability, let's do this. So now our max should change from 97 to 98, and it does, and everything changes. And we said media, not, it should be median. So now our median has also changed because we added another value. Because now we have one, two, three, this is four, five, six, seven. So our median is right at let's run it again. Our median is coming out at 86, and that is our middle number here. And our average is at 88. It brought our average up just slightly. So we have those those things now that we have done it, and we've done it very simply. Here's an opportunity to look at these again, so you can see them and you can pause. I'm going to show the min very simply. You just take your max and you and you find your way there, and you can pause right here so you can see what the algorithm and you can study it. Let's go to max. Uh, the max. Same thing, very similar to the median, except that the symbol changes, and of course, we change the variable to match what we're looking for. And the symbol changes because we want to go with max, and we start this one from zero, which would be our min value, and then that way it can grow from there. To get the sum, very simply, this algorithm, and you can pause here so you can see that we have this algorithm to just sum up the total values and the average is very simply the sum divided by the total numbers in your sequence and the median is the middle number but if you have an even sequence and this is what we use to find out if a, a sequence if a number is even the sequence length is a number so we find that and find that now if we had this out of sequence if for example these numbers were not sorted right now they're sorted from lowest to highest if they were not sorted then that would mean that we would have to sort them and I plan to do that in the next video if you stay tuned and you follow you can you will get to see that now one thing we didn't discuss is the mode which is that's what is next so the mode the mode is the number that appears most frequently in a sequence of numbers so in this case for example the mode we would have to look through these numbers and find the one that occurs most frequently so in this case we have 75 80 85, 86, 95, 97, and 98, and we don't have a number that occurs most frequently. So in order to do that, we would have to have something like this, and let's see if we can find it. Now, this can get a little tricky, and we have to give it a little bit of thought. If we were going to find the mode, then we would have to somehow store that value and then get a count of that. How can we do that? The way we can do that would be to count the number of occurrences and of any one value and and uh, and then we could find that value. Since these are flow numbers, it'd be pretty pretty challenging to do that. But we still can do it. So one way to do it, and it would be a brute force approach. And a brute force approach is when you don't know the 
most efficient algorithm to do it and just kind of take and go with the, the best way you can think of. One way you can do it is to say, for example, One way to do that would be to store the value somehow and store a counter against that value. So in order to do that, we can just loop through and count each value as it goes through the loop and get a count of how many times it happens. One way we can do that is by saying, having a sequence length, right? And we would need another array. So in order for us to do that, we would probably need another, another array to keep track of which one happens most frequently. Since we know the length, we can say something like this, and I, I don't think I can get away with it because, um, let's, let's just give it a try. Let's say that we have an array, okay, of counts, but I don't think I can get away with it. Let's see if it even lets me do it. Yeah, it lets me do it. Okay, so we have counts. And we initialize them all to zero. So what we can do is loop through them. And as we go through them, we can store our counts. So we can loop, have an inner loop. By doing this, we're going to go to the first item and figure out what other items are like it, and that that is going to give us a count of all the sequences. So, for example, we can say now we can say if that the first thing we want to do, right? So, in order for us to do it, we have to say. We can say counts i because we know we always have at least one, right? So when it goes to the first items, the first time around through the item, we have at least one count. And then here we can say if sequence. sequence j equals if sequence j equals sequence i we can say counts i plus plus that's going to in increment the number of counts and in actuality I think we don't need to increment it to one because 
it's going to initially give us one. So we do that. So it's going to count how many times. So if the sequence J equals the sequence I, then we increment the count. So the first time it's going to go around, it's going to say if 0, 0 equals that, then it's going to give us that. So now we have the counts. And that's giving us the counts of the index, which index occurs most frequently. So we have the counts. And so now that we have the counts, we can figure out which one occurs most frequently. Now keep in mind that whichever one occurs most frequently is going to show up in multiple indexes. So what we want to do in that case is take the one that occurs the most often, the first one that occurs the most often, and save that index. So we have to loop through again through the counts to find max. And when we find it, then that gives us our most frequently uh, used numbers. So for example, we can loop through and say the same way we find max, we already have something to find max, right? So we can loop through and say but this is actually floats. So we don't necessarily want to do that. We can just do this. So, we can find max, right? And it's going to give us which one happens to be most, more, most, most frequently, which is the max. But, uh, also, if sequence i greater than max, max. But what we need in this case, we actually need the index. So we also need the index in index of max count equals zero. So we can say negative one. It doesn't matter. We'll just say index of max count equals. find that now it's gonna actually this is going to probably find the last one in the sequence we don't care because in the end what we're gonna return to find the mode we can return sequence index of max count and that should give us our mode if we did everything correctly, that'll give us our mode. So let's go ahead and find mode. Let's see if it works. Will it find it? It should find 85. Let's see. Okay, so that's what I thought would happen because we have to use an actual uh, constant in order to do this. If we hard code it, we won't get into dynamic memory allocation at this point, but 
let's just say that we know the uh, max length. We have to hard code it for now. We won't get into dynamic memory allocation for now. So we know this number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can actually use a. We can define it, and then, and it gives us our mode is ninety-eight. How did that happen? There's something wrong with our algorithm because it should not be ninety-eight. It should be eighty-five because we're doing something here. Oh, and that's because uh, for finding our mode, we're using the sequence. We shouldn't be using sequence. We should be using count i greater than max, and then that gives us our max. And our mode is 75. Why is it 75? That's still not correct. Let's see, we went through that sequence, we went through the length, we go from I, and we say sequence J equals sequence I, we increment our counts for I, is sequence J equals sequence I counts I plus plus. should be correct and we go through the sequence length here i equals zero it counts i greater than max which is zero the max equals sequence and we should have that counts i greater than max let's do something here let's put a a debugging. So we can see here that it did give us the correct count on on three, which three is the only one with two. Oh, but I see, but it's the so we have counts in the index three, so the index three zero one two three it should have gave us eighty five. So it did get the correct uh the correct counts there. So now when we go through the sequence length and we go through the counts, when we go through the counts, I greater than max. Oh, so here's another mistake. Counts I. Okay, so that's what was happening because we weren't storing the right value. And so now it should give us the right mode, and it does give us the right mode. So that's our mistake. And it, you can see, you can use printf to get logging information. 
you know, kind of give you an idea of what's going on. We can actually remove it now that we have the value. And there you are. Now, this find mode is a little more complicated, and you can pause the video and kind of get an idea. And this is a very brute force approach. I'm sure you can come up with a better way. And as an exercise, take it as a challenge. See if you can find a better way to get the max without doing so much. Because if this is very, very busy, you might be able to do it uh, in a much shorter manner. I just kind of came off with it off the cuff, and, you know, you might be able to do it. But the whole purpose of this was to show you how you can... Leverage what you know about loops, about arrays, and about if statements and conditions to find something meaningful like the statistical values for a sequence. At this point, we didn't do sort. We will do sort next time. Right now, if you were to do, if you were to sort this, it would throw off at at, a, at least your median. Everything else might be okay, but your median would not be okay. The other thing is if you were to change your um, number of uh, it, it, your number of sequences, it would also throw it off because we're using a hard-coded value right now. So just keep that in mind. So this video ran a little long and I, I realize it's a lot to take in, but you know, just, you can always come back to it, pause it if you go, watch it in multiple segments. Um, one thing <clears throat> about this is that we hard coded the value to um, what was it the uh, finding the the mode and we did this with eight so if you change your sequence length you would have to come back and change this now there's other ways that you can get around this you can use the finds and constants and different things or we could just use a higher value like maybe a hundred and then that way we don't have to worry about it as long as they're sequence lengths are shorter than 100, then we can always uh, count on it. So, for example, we did this. We could change our sequence length without having to worry about ch changing our program to anything else that as long as the sequences, these numbers, don't reach 100, we'll be okay. But uh, there's other ways to get around it. There's ways to get uh, dynamic allocation of memory. We won't get into that because we haven't covered that topic up to this point. Uh, just keep that in mind and you know if you like this video go ahead and subscribe you know go ahead and click like share with your friends a lot of free learning a lot of good stuff and just keep on watching thanks for watching until next time